That's right, 1,111 subscribers as of this afternoon. I'm somebody now! This is the kind of spontaneous publicity that makes people! Things are going to start happening to me now. Hey folks, Damien of Southpaw Designs here. Are you considering purchasing a CNC machine or at least curious about them? Don't know where to start? Well, today we're going to take a few minutes and discuss some of the most common questions that I get from my subscribers and viewers regarding my Onefinity. But first, here's my question for you. Is CNC woodworking real woodworking? I'll give you my thoughts on that later. Now, first, I use the Onefinity Woodworker X50 and I love it. I have a separate video that is a, an objective review about it, which I'll link in the description below. I'm not affiliated with Onefinity in the slightest. I receive no compensation of any sort from them, but I do love this machine. Any affiliations that I have will be clearly outlined in the description. Now, when I started building my woodworking shop a couple of years ago, I, I immediately fell in love with the craft. I'd actually fallen in love with the craft years ago while spending time in my grandfather's shop, but it's only been recently that I finally had the time, the space, and the cash to start my own shop. When I started building my own shop, I didn't foresee that I'd invest in a CNC, to be perfectly honest. I was focused on traditional work, woodworking. When I thought of CNC work, I thought that all CNC machines cost tens of thousands of dollars and took up an entire room. I quickly realized that there were a variety of desktop CNC machines like this one on the market today, priced similarly to other common woodworking tools, and that they're relatively easy to understand and use. Now, first of all, I have the ultimate respect for you woodworkers that hand cut and handcraft your work. It's amazing to watch and you should be recognized for that amazing work. But why would an average woodworker or hobbyist use a CNC? First of all, it's typically going to be more accurate than hand routing since it's computerized. Every line of G-code is precise and while mistakes do happen, a well-designed project will result in a clean, finished work. Also, depending on the software of choice, you can typically use any font that you like. Websites like FontFreak and DaFont.com have a boatload of fonts free for personal use and many premium fonts that are affordable for commercial use, which will allow you to customize your traditional woodworking projects for your customers. Second, a CNC is typically much faster than conventional routing. You can adjust the speeds of your CNC, and large work pieces can still take several hours, but it's still going to be much faster than trying to hand route or carve. And one of the biggest factors in my decision to purchase my Onefinity was this. It allows you to double your productivity. While my CNC is running, I'm freed up to either work on other projects in the shop and also clean and organize. Now, I strongly, I strongly discourage you from leaving your work unattended, but a CNC is like an extra set of hands in your workshop and can double your productivity. Next, I'm a conventional woodworker. What's the learning curve? The good news is that, at least in my experience, that part's the easy part. Once you have your design and it's converted into G-code, the process of actually cutting out your project is fairly simple as long as you probe your project correctly, secure your workpiece, and use the correct bits. Now you will need to learn to use a software package. Easel, VCarve, Aspire, Fusion, CarveCo. If you're just starting out, Easel is a great starting point, but in my experience, it's somewhat limited, and I outgrew that software pretty quickly. Now, let me remind you that I have a background in software and design, so it's not really surprising. You can still do some really cool things with a program as simple as Easel, and it's very easy to learn. But if you find yourself outgrowing it, I found that VCarve is a good next step up. And once you've learned to use the software of your choice, the hardest part is done. In case you need it, I have a playlist in the description below with a series of videos related to learning the software choices. But once you've got your work file and your G code, all you do is set up your CNC and let it run. Oh, and by the way, let me take a moment and ask you for a like, comment, and most importantly, if you feel that this work is valuable, a subscription below. Those little gestures are free to you, but they're the currency that tells YouTube that my audience 
thinks that this content is valuable, which in terms helps me to grow this channel. And most importantly, your subscription means that my channel will keep growing and you'll see my other work as it's posted. Do I need to know a programming language or any fancy computer terminology? When you design your CNC software, whether it be Easel, VCarve, Carveco, Fusion, 360, or any other type of design software, you'll need to be trained in the software, and you'll need to understand both the CNC concepts as well as the conventional woodworking concepts. But you don't need to understand any programming or coding languages. You can manually code your G-code, but it's not necessary. You'll typically design in what's commonly referred to as a WYSIWYG editor, which means what you see is what you get. That means that you'll design and see your work on screen, and the on-screen representation will be fairly realistic compared to your finished work. You'll design your work in one of these editors, then download your G-code, which you simply plug and play in your CNC. The next common question that I get is, what bits do I need to get started? Can I just use my conventional router bits? First of all, you've got to remember that some CNC bits aren't like conventional router bits. While you may use some conventional router bits, such as roundover bits and chamfer bits in your work, uh, those aren't the most common bits to use. The most common starter CNC bits are what are referred to as upcut and downcut end mill bits. These, pit, these bits are typically spiral and will commonly have two to four flutes which are used to both cut and pull the wood shavings out of your workpiece. End mill bits are commonly used to cut out material and create pockets. Next, you're gonna have V bits, which are commonly used in engraving. They're listed by their angles, such as a 90 degree, 60 degree, 20 degree, etc. with the degree being the angle of the tip itself. These bits are great for engraving, with wider angles commonly used for larger letters or deeper cuts. Roundover and chamfer bits can be used as finishing bits, just as they are when using a router in a conventional way. They can easily follow your contours to soften edges and give you a cleaner look to your work. Now, do you need to invest in a whole bunch of expensive bits? Once you've mastered your tool, I would say that it's a good idea to invest in those more expensive, higher quality bits. But when you're just starting out, I don't think it's a bad idea to buy the cheap bits because quite often you're going to break them, you're going to lose them, you're going to mess up. So you don't want to feel like you've wasted a lot of money when something does break. That's just my take on it. So in addition to your CNC, what other tools and equipment do you need to help you with your CNC work? The good news is if you're already a conventional woodworker, then you probably already have most of the tools to make the most of your CNC. But these are the tools that I find myself running to first. Number one on my list would be a planer. If you're primarily working with MDF, uh, plywood, or surfaced wood, then a planer isn't as important. But I have a good amount of, of rough lumber, so my planer helps me to prep the wood and to get it to the correct thickness. The main advantage in working with rough lumber comes down to price. You can usually get it cheaper than finished lumber. Now, I was fortunate enough to complete a project for a friend who'd won a lot from an estate sale, and it was full of rough lumber. I completed a project, and as payment, I took as much of the rough cherry and walnut as I wanted. I use a DeWalt 734 planer, which works great for me. The DeWalt 735X, I believe it is, is also a great model that I see several woodworkers use. Next would be calipers. This is a cheap set of calipers, and I'm not doing any tool and die work or machining any precise parts. So this set, which cost me about $12, works great. This set allows me to check the thickness of my material before I place it on my spoil board. Again, if you're working with surface material, it's not as big of a deal, but a set of calipers are handy even when you're working with surface material, because seldom is material advertised at their exact dimensions. Also, 12 bucks is a cheap price to pay for a tool as handy as this in your wood shop. Everybody needs one. Next, in my opinion, it's going to be a simple table saw. You're going to need to cut down your work, and a table saw is the way to do it. Now, I have this DeWalt job site saw, which only has an eight and a quarter inch blade, 
and it serves me well. I do smaller projects. I've even done some larger furniture with this, and it's a great tool. I think it's very handy if you don't have the money for a huge full-size table saw. And at this point, I don't have a miter saw or miter saw station. So I built this handy crosscut sled, which is a great way to do crosscuts if you don't have a miter saw. Next, you're going to want a sander of some sort. I have this simple little Black & Decker sander that I picked up uh, about a year ago, and it does a great job for the small amount of work that I do. 3M, Festool, some of those bigger, more expensive brands make great products. And if you're going to be doing a lot, then you might want to invest in something a little more high end than this, but it does a good job. I also have this wind spindle sander that I actually just set up yesterday. I haven't even had a chance to use it yet. Look, the sandpaper is nice and clean. Um, this is a very popular model, and I think it's really going to help me a lot in my shop. Uh, check back in a couple of weeks because I'm going to be doing a, re a review of this actual product. And finally, a palm router is always handy. When you pull your work off the CNC, you could probably measure it and reattach it and flip it over if you needed to do some routing work to the bottom side, but you can just as easily pull out a palm router and accomplish the same thing much quicker. As much as I love working with my CNC, I love conventional woodworking, and this little thing is nice and smooth. And the final question, is CNC really woodworking? My CNC allows me to customize my conventional woodworking projects and creatively design fun projects for other people to enjoy. Working with a CNC still requires a complex understanding of woodworking techniques, finishing methods, and knowledge of how you need to adjust your work methods for different types of wood. And very seldom does a CNC project begin or end on the CNC itself. There's always prep work that needs to be done before my Onefinity goes to work. And there's always finishing work once it comes off the spoil board. So is it really woodworking? I'll leave that decision up to you. But for me, I really don't care what other people say. I enjoy doing it, and my customers enjoy the work that I do. Thank you for watching to the end. And if you're still watching at this point, it probably means that you've gained something valuable from this. I hope you hit that subscription button below. And uh, links to products mentioned in this video are linked below. And as I mentioned before, I'm an Amazon affiliate, so if you do decide to purchase any of those tools, purchases made through those links support this channel at no additional cost to you. Thank you, and let me know what you'd like to see next.